Hi, my name is Mike Jensen, and I believe I've solved the mystery of the double slit experiment, aka wave particle duality. And um, this is not a polished video, this is just me in the morning waking up from a long night and um, giving a quick explanation along with the link at the bottom for people being able to reproduce this experiment with um, the theory that I've come up with to explain it. So over uh, over a century, uh, the wave particle duality has really uh, baffled scientists and is sort of a bit of a mystery. And uh, even Einstein didn't like it. He didn't like quantum physics, uh, particularly uh, quantum entanglement, because it, for him it was not deterministic. It was sort of a spooky action at a distance. And um, and so I've been thinking about this problem for a long time, probably for a decade. and. It wasn't until about two weeks ago, I sort of had a bit of an epiphany, and um, and that's what started this. Is and I didn't mean for it to turn into a theory; <laughs> it just sort of became a theory. Um, <clears throat> but um, so okay, where to start? So the problem with the double slit experiment is that it acts both as a wave and a particle, and that's been a bit of a mystery because it's not deterministic it seems like there's magic happening <clears throat> as the wave passes through the slits it acts as a wave and it causes an interference pattern but when observed it creates a definite reality so what happens there what's 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 happening so uh, I guess I'll start off with um, a bit of an analogy first is if you've ever played a video game you're playing the video game and the video game screen is moving to wherever you're turning on the joystick right that xbox or playstation or computer that you're using only processes the information that's on the screen and why does it do that because if the video game was to try to calculate and compute every possibility of that video game there's just no way that the processor could keep up okay and it turns out that our physical reality our three-dimensional reality works exactly the same way so that begs the question then well how does reality make reality not reality how does it defer all the rest of reality that's not being observed and that's the key so it turns out okay so I guess I'll start with we've just done the the computer game analogy um, you're looking at things frame by frame now for our three-dimensional reality that's like a three-dimensional video game I want you to imagine a three-dimensional grid or a lattice structure uh, but it's so tiny that we can't decipher what is pixelated and what is not pixelated. It's the ultimate computer game. Now, at the tiniest Planck scales, um, each one of those voxels or space-time pixels has a memory capacity. And if you imagine four of them together, at each vertex of those four pixels is what's called an ancilla. And that ancilla is always calculating what the cost it is to compute reality. And it turns out that what happens is that as, as this wave travels through the double slits, it's basically acting as a cloud. There's more to, more to it in a second. Think of it as a cloud of three-dimensional pixels traveling through both double slits. Here's the thing, is that each one of those pixels on its own has what's called a substrate saturation protocol, which means there's a maximum level of information for each one of those that they can hold. And if, if any information increases past that memory allocation, it immediately, immediately resets, it just drops. And if you shine light, and here's, here's the really interesting thing, light, binds together groups or clouds of these three-dimensional pixels in reality and sends it through those double slits at the same time 
as a single register, meaning as a single packet of information that is that has encoded all of the space-time pixels or reality so that it doesn't have to compute all of reality all at once. It defers, so light acts as an encoding mechanism of reality and sends it through the double slits as a waveform and only when it becomes entangled with information, aka the detector screen or a measurement device, is when the information load spikes and what and it creates a cascade of that cloud so any pixel or any any um, path where the informational load spikes it collapses the whole cloud and it becomes a definite particle that's the trick and light it turns out is a form of encoded deferred reality so light and that goes into, into the theory, you'll be able to um, look at exactly how light and its frequency and amplitude and all the rest of it can, can modulate the size of that cloud and that coherent, it's, it's like a coherency cloud. So uh, it's in a superpositional state. That cloud is a superpositional state flowing through the double slit. And only when it becomes entangled with information does does that create um, a, a time when it has to calculate? So just like the video game, um, it only calculates when you look at it. And the same with light, it, reality only gets calculated if the cost of information is too high and then it has to choose a definite reality. So the, the universal computer is always computing the least computationally expensive path and I can show it mathematically and in my theory it gives links to my collab simulations using all those theories and it exactly mimics um, what we observe as uh, the, the wave particle duality and how it how it collapses now I didn't mean for it to turn into a theory but it also describes uh, black hole entropy and that's in my, in my theory, we use the von Neumann entropy equation. And it shows that all of these tiny 3D pixels that, that work with the wave function collapse also happen in black holes and it exactly matches uh, general relativity. So uh, the computer simulation will show um, a black hole growing and what's happening is all those 3D pixels become permanently saturated. So with wave function collapse, they get temporarily saturated and then reset. But with a black hole, there's no state of lower entropy and they become permanently saturated. And that's what black holes are, is permanently saturated areas of space time. And it acts as a giant sphere of locked up information that can no longer propagate those light waves, which encodes reality and that reality can't escape because the gravity is so strong. Um, and also with cosmology, it has a link with cosmology as well because the light that we're viewing from faraway galaxies is only computed when it entangles with information, like our eyes looking through a telescope at, at the moon or something. Reality only happens once it becomes entangled with an informational system where the budget gets to a point where it triggers that um, substrate saturation protocol, which is mind blowing. So there's a new fundamental constant of nature, which is S max, which is the total maximum entropy of a system. And um, there's the substrate saturation protocol, which is in the quantum world, a temporary reset. And in black holes or the extremes of gravity is a permanent saturation of those 3D uh, voxels. I'm not saying that reality is a three-dimensional game, but I'm saying reality is a three-dimensional game. <laughs> but um, no, it's, it's, it's so fascinating. And I think that I've solved the mystery, um, but it will be up to you to go into the, the link and read the theory. And there's more, more precisely, there's a list of 10 experiments that any high school physics 
college physics, university physics, or somebody with the lab at home looking at optics can reproduce all of these effects. And you can actually look at what's called the UCB or the universal cost budget of these clouds, these superpositional clouds, and exactly when they collapse according to the type of light that you're using. Because light, it turns out, with you know the transverse, the transverse and the vertical waves, um, it's actually stitching, it's, those are there, not incidentally, but by design, because that helps the universe to stitch together those three-dimensional voxels of space-time, and it encodes that reality in a cost-efficient way so that it, it can compute all those realities simultaneously and not have to um, choose an outcome until it's absolutely necessary. And it turns out that the math can describe all of that precisely. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, I'm, I, I took two weeks off work to, to work on this and uh, I'm also moving so I have a lot of stuff on the go. I'm gonna try to get um, a proper uh, video and animations together for you in the future. But uh, I believe that I have demystified what is now not a mystery of the double slit. It is a deterministic way of reality to encode all the possibilities of our universe without having the cost of having to compute it. That was a mouthful. I'm Mike Jensen. Thank you very much for your time and have a look at the theory. The theory is a bit mind blowing and um, don't let that don't let that take away from the end result, which is that you can test all of this. All right, take care for now, and uh, hopefully I'll have a, a video in. Give give me a week. Give me a week or so. I've got a lot of stuff on the go right now. All right, talk to you later. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.